bringing people together to have these conversations and then to extend it onto an online platform for further sharing is, is important. Our communities are beyond what's in the room. To have such global conversations really widens the scope of, of the work that we do. I want to light this candle in memory of so many people that we know, personally or virtually, who have lost their lives due to violence and hate crimes, due to the exclusion of adequate health care. This talk is in memory of them. This photograph was taken in 1967 in Port Elizabeth, South Africa. That's my hometown where I was born. And my family watched as the apartheid tractors bulldozed and crushed down our homes. Our families were forced onto trucks and pushed into the most outlying areas of the city. And my family's land was allocated whites only area. The apartheid state, they actually determined that we would be disposable people. But we were not disposable people. We survived state of emergencies, detentions without trials. We were in lockdown, but we were never disposable people. And on the eve of our democracy, when the apartheid state knew that there was no going back, there was only going forward, the apartheid state destroyed 44,000 tons of evidence, files that would not hold them accountable for heinous crimes that they committed on innocent human beings. Because evidence allows leaders who commit heinous crimes to be held accountable. And so you can imagine that in 1994, in 1994, we were completely elated that as black queer people and black South Africans, we stood in lines for hours and hours and we cast our very first vote and double victory because sexual orientation was guaranteed into our constitution. And who would have thought that South Africa, in the very first term of its democracy, would recognize same-sex couples to be able to adopt and to recognize them as recognized families? Who would have thought that same-sex partner benefits would come forth and that South Africa would be the fifth country in the world to recognize same-sex marriage. It was unbelievable. But as we know, apartheid never ended because we cast our vote. It's a continuum of a struggle to fight against the evils of poverty and racial inequality. Because essentially, in South Africa, there's a white world who owns the majority of the land. And queer white folks, they are safe. They walk down parks, they kiss each other, they make out in public, and they drink cocktails in bars designed for them. But right on the outskirts of that very same city, there are thousands and thousands of black, lesbian, gay, transgender, and intersex persons that can never enjoy that privilege. The apartheid state knew what they were designing. Townships were never meant for you to have a longevity of life and enjoy your wellness. It was not designed for that. It was not designed for you to have love and compassion. Townships were designed to frustrate you, to breed anger and to breed violence. And so the extension of apartheid into our democracy is very prevalent. And when people say that countries flourish because there are more rights that are guaranteed, I ask them to look closer to South Africa because we have ticked all the boxes. But we're one of the most violent countries in the world HIV infections are at its highest. And with the escalation of violence and crime, we had to do something. It was just too overwhelming. And so we chose weapons. We had a Nikon D7000 camera, an audio recorder, paper and pen, and a laptop. We had to document and make sure that our black queer lives mattered that it had to be visibilized, it had to be on the national and international agenda, we had to make this possible. And so in 2012, I picked up my camera and I drove for seven hours to a small town and I met this family and community that was completely broken because the police said that Tapelo Makutle died of a neck wound. Tapelo identified as a gender non-conforming activist. Tapelo was decapitated their genitalia was severed, and their tongue was cut out. A neck wound. Last year, in June 2013, 
Duda Zilizozo walked home. Her neighbor grabbed her, pulled her into the back of his yard, raped her, forced her, stoned her, and forced a toilet brush into her genitalia. It's disturbing to set up a camera and watch parents talk lovingly about the daughter that they have lost. The daughter they describe as a tomboy, as a butch, as shy, as a breadwinner. She was a lesbian. Documentation is what we know we can do to make these stories real. And documentation is what we do to ensure that evidence is gathered so that we can advocate for justice. Our work matters. It matters on the front line. In Duduzile's case two weeks ago, their perpetrator was sentenced to 30 years in prison. And for the first time, the courts have recognized the linkages between hate crimes and sexual orientation and murder. But you know, we simply do not have enough prisons for homophobic and transphobic people in our world. Our solution has to be the very first enemy that we started with, which is poverty, which is the systems that are created to cripple people, to belittle us, and to make us disposable. Queer people, like every other black person in South Africa, desires a job. Because you see, laws are great, but they don't make you full. They don't stop you from being raped. Economic empowerment and poverty alleviation is what we need. Stand by us, support our work on the front lines. So far, we have done amazing work because of your support. Don't stop. We have only just begun. Because one day, not only in South Africa, but in every other country, our leaders will be held accountable for these heinous crimes that they commit in the name of morality, religion, culture. They will be punished for these crimes, and we must hold them accountable. I invite you to please rise with me. The song says, what have we done? We sing this song at funerals, and today, we use our breath and we use our life to honor those who have been on the front lines and who have stayed with us through all of this injustice. We salute every activist we know who has fought for me to be here and for you to be here. Thank you.